One of the great benefits of the built-in marker animation is being able to show the, the learner uh, where the markers are, especially if it's a fairly crowded screen. Um, but the question was raised recently uh, regarding, well, once someone's visited a marker, so in this case, here's the marker, I visit it, um, is there a way to ha have it stop pulsing? And currently, as far as the built-in pulse goes on the marker, that is, answer is no. But with the new emphasis animations, this is obviously a different type of pulse here. But you can have this marker set to where when you hover over it, in this case, it stops uh, pulsing. And then, therefore, you can continue on with the rest of the course and not have that distracting uh, pulse happening uh, when you don't really need it to happen. So let's show you how you can do that. On this particular slide, I've built one that shows you how it's built, and then we're going to come in and add it to the one that we haven't added it to. So basically, all I've done is I did add an, a hover state to the marker, and then I also created um, an emphasis animation, and it could be pulse, or an, if you're familiar with the emphasis, you could add any of these options instead, a shake or teeter, which may be more beneficial. And then there's a series of triggers that we're going to expand for you. The first one is the trigger that's built, uh, emphasize the marker using pulse. I just edit it to say when the timeline starts on the slide and also under the condition that the marker is normal. And then one additional trigger to keep it pulsing is to add that pulse when the animation completes of the pulse. And again, under the condition that the marker is normal. So let's show you how we can add that to these. So here's a marker. I'm going to come in and remove the pulse option from that marker. And I'm going to add instead an emphasis animation. And this time I'll choose the teeter just to give you a different example of what it could look like. So the teeter is here. And it's saying by default, emphasize this marker using the teeter when the user clicks. I'm just going to say when the timeline starts, on the slide. Now, right now, that's just going to be, you play it, and it's going to uh, automatically uh, teeter uh, time the timeline starts, but only that one time. And it was very subtle. You might not have even noticed it if you weren't paying attention. So there's a few things I'm going to do to enhance this. First, I'm going to go to the effect options and make it a, a little bit more aggressive teeter. I could also make it slower or faster here. Um, and then I'm going to add a, another trigger here in a moment to replicate that. But first, uh, to be able to turn that uh, animation off, I'm going to add an additional state. So I'm going to hit Edit States. I'm going to add a new state. And really, I'm just going to do the hover because I want it to stop time we hover over it and interact with it. And I don't really even have to change the color at this moment. I just really need the state to exist. I'm going to hit Done. And now I'm going to add a condition to this and say, under the condition that the object, the marker, is equal to normal. That's the, really the only time I want it doing that. And now I'm going to create a new trigger. I can duplicate this one. I'll just create a new one from scratch. That'll also be emphasize the marker using teeter when the animation completes of the marker, teeter, under the condition. Also, again, uh, one of these conditions uh, probably isn't needed, but it's nice to go and have that consistency there. So now you'll see how this plays when I preview the slide. So I've got this little teetering, um, getting your attention um, on the marker. Want to hover over it, it'll cease teetering. When I can click, I can interact with it. Now when I leave, it doesn't teeter anymore. So it would only be teetering on the ones that I have not interacted with. So that's how you can control an animation on a marker.